you know, last season you guys had a little bit more of a normal preseason, but this year uh, with everything going on with uh, with COVID and everything, what's been what's been preseason like for you guys, and, and how ready do you feel for the season starting up next, a week from today? I mean, I feel like up until the game against Phoenix getting canceled, um, everything was pretty normal, you know. I mean, in the sense that getting getting in the, the right amount of work, um, obviously tomorrow being our first 90-minute game against an opponent uh, outside of ourselves is going to be pretty interesting. Um, that's the one area that obviously I think we – we definitely need to take tomorrow pretty serious and get ourselves dialed in for uh, for Minnesota because, yeah, not having that like full game experiences, um, yeah, it's just different, you know, and and it's not it's not the norm, but we 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 have to kind of just roll with it this year. So, um, like I said, I think tomorrow's a big day for us to kind of get everything going in the right direction for for next Friday. Hey Shane, uh, this is Jeremiah from Sounder at Heart. Um, how, how, how do you, where do you feel like you're falling or how, what, what do you think of, if you could assess the, the center back, uh, kind of grouping and where you, you kind of see yourself in that, in that group and, and how the transition to like a three back, uh, formation seems to be going. How I see myself, <laughs> I mean, I guess, um, I mean, honestly, I, I don't really think about it all that often. I, I mean, I think we have three really good center backs, um, three really, you know, high quality center backs. And, and we got uh, got a lot of guys who can play there. You know, I feel like um, obviously Yaimar and Javi, I mean, Javi has played for Ecuador. I mean, obviously shown his quality. And same with Yaimar. I mean, I don't think there's any question marks with those guys. They're, they're guys who have been around and proven themselves. And, you know, I feel like for all of us now, it's just about like, can we, can we sort of dial it in playing together? Can I, and I think, um, I think we, you know, I've, I've always thought this can be like a super formidable defense. And I mean, even when you look at last year's numbers though, I mean, I think we were up there with some of the best defenses in the league and, you know, obviously, um, sometimes that kind of gets looked past, but I feel like th we can be a very, very good defensive team. And obviously we've got guys who can step in and play that position if need be, um, you know, guys like new who and Jordy. So I think there's a lot of competition right now for those spots. And I think it's keeping everybody sort of on their toes. And, um, I mean, that's kind of how it needs to be. You know, I think, like I said, I think we have three really good center backs, but at the same time, we all need to be on form in order to kind of, feel like we have three really good center backs. Hi, Shane. It's Bill Swartz with Como Radio. I played uh, soccer a long time, played defender. I know how physical can get back there. There's a lot of emphasis this year and now new substitution rules about concussions. How concerned are you and do you favor the two extra subs uh, for that? Definitely. I mean, I think head injuries, uh, I mean, those are – they're. The, they're, they can be scary things, and I think you want to definitely take the pressure off the player in situations where if you're thinking, okay, well, we're out of subs, maybe I'll grind through this one and try and just get through it. I think it takes that pressure away, so I think it's a really good idea. Are there extra precautions in training that you guys do to avoid some of that contact, or you just go out there and play full throttle and, and you know just rely on your skills not to knock heads? Yeah, I think obviously as you kind of get older, you start to kind of become a little bit more aware of those things. I think when you're younger, you kind of just go for it and then maybe you get one or two concussions and you're like, all right, you know, if this ball is a little bit uh, questionable, I think uh, I might just pull out of this one and not not stick my neck in where obviously I think it's different if you're going in for a 50-50 tackle, but definitely with your head. Yeah, I mean, I think as you get older, you kind of harder. Hey, Shane. Um, I, and I'm sorry, I joined late. I don't know if this was the opening question, but just how excited are you and you all just to play other than a teammate in reference to tomorrow, you know, scrimmage? How important is that? I think it's really important, you know, and I think the, the good thing about playing a team like San Diego 
um, is I think they're going to be really hungry to prove themselves. You know, a lot of those guys are going to have a point to prove. They're going to know that this is a really good opportunity for them to play in front of an MLS staff against MLS opposition. Whereas sometimes in the preseason games against MLS teams, you know, you know each other. You kind of, it's not, I mean, it's intense and it's, you know, the level is high, but it, it, there is a, a little bit of a feeling of, you know, you know the opposition. Whereas when you're playing against a USL team, you're going to get that intensity and that effort. And I think that's the most important thing for tomorrow for us because we maybe haven't had enough of that this preseason. So I think it's a really important day for us. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And going back to the defense, regardless who is there, how important is it obviously to keep defenders in front, but once you guys get the ball to get the ball out to the playmakers, in other words, distribution from the defense, to the midfielders and down the field. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why we have those guys. Uh, you know, I, I think that's why those guys are so highly rated guys like Nico guys like Raul, Jao Paulo, obviously it's not our job to make the game. We we're, we're well aware of that. I think, picking and choosing the spots where we can be effective. But I mean, at the same time, I mean, like that's, that's why those, there are our main guys, you know, I mean, I think sometimes people get caught up uh, in, you know, you have to make these incredible passes as a center back, but it's like, well, if I'm standing next to Jao Paulo, who is, <laughs> let's be realistic, a incredible passer. Why not? Why wouldn't I just give him the ball? Thanks. Hey, Shane, uh, Shane. Jacob, with the Seattle Times. I wanted to ask just as far as the, not really aftermath, but I'm, how, how has training kind of been as far as, uh, you know, dealing with the fact that uh, you guys don't have Jordan Moore, so definitely are not going to have Jordan Moore this season. Yeah, Jordan's a big loss for sure, you know. Um, a lot, all those guys who left are big losses. There's no question about that. Uh, I mean, Jordan's right up there, but, um, you know, Kelvin, JJ, Gustav, um they're, they, they're all going to be a big loss and um, we're, we're going to have to find ways to to compete and uh, win games without those guys now. I mean, that's I think at the end of the day, our focus has to kind of come into this group now. Um, obviously, like I said, yeah, Jordan is a, is a big time loss, but I think the way that this team is set up, you know, we, 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 we're going to adapt and learn how to win games in other ways. And one more, the steadiness of the guy behind you all, just what does that do to a center back or any team knowing you've got a steady, well, I mean, a veteran and a, a pretty good stopper in a, a Stefan Fry and his ability to communicate? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a it's a it's a real pleasure playing with Steph, you know, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Sometimes I just watch him in training and it's not just. Um, I think there's a lot of things. I think how um, sort of dialed in he is during the games, how focused he is on like little movements and things and his communication is just, it's, it's really elite, honestly. And then obviously the fact that he, he's going to bail you out once or twice in a game with huge saves. I mean, it's that, I mean, that's what you, that's what you ask for in a, in a big time keeper. So, I mean, we're obviously really lucky that he's, he's on our side. Shane, whether it's in uh, or in in uh, the, the games you play, just simply in training, uh, what have you seen from Freddie Montero so far in in the last little bit of time, and and what problems is he still able to give defenders? Yeah, Freddie is. Um, it's a, honestly, I don't think I'd ever played against Freddie, so I didn't really know what to expect um, before we signed him. And, you know, he's obviously a super intelligent guy. I think he knows the game really well. And I think I've been really impressed by his, uh, his like technical ability on the ball. Maybe, I mean, maybe that is by me lacking in, in studying film of him before, like really knowing his game, but I've been really impressed by how creative he is. You know, he can really play the ball with both feet uh, really good passer, uh, into like the full backs. And obviously I think he's shown in the scrimmages, he can finish the ball. So, but no, definitely been, been pretty impressed by Freddie in terms of the way he can, um, like connect the ball with, with, with the team and kind of be a link for the team. So.
And when you're facing a, a two cent, a two forward formation where where it's one kind of more technical guy who's really good on the ball, and then one larger person, sort of like a Will Bruin, what sort of trouble does that give center backs just in general when you're facing those two type of players combined at the top? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know you combine that with you know some of the pace that we have at the fullback positions, and I think that's where you can really hurt teams because obviously. Uh, you know, that, I think that's where you got a guy like Will who can really battle for the team. And in situations where you need an outlet um, and things aren't going well playing out, you can maybe try and use him. Um, but then when the possession is really good and we're able to get on the ball, that's where a guy like Freddie coming underneath, um, you know, kind of similar to like how Raul likes to play and being able to bop it out and get it to the fullbacks and then get in the box. Uh, I think it, it's going to create a lot of problems for teams. I mean, Will's no fun to play against. I mean, that's it's just the reality. It's it's terrible playing against Will in practice because he's just he's big and he's strong and and it's uh, yeah, and he can bully you. So I think if we can get the movements right and the timings right, uh, we could create a lot of problems. Hey Shane, um, I heard a rumor that you were a burger. Is that is that accurate? <laughs> I don't know. Who'd you hear that rumor from? <laughs> from Kellen. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I do like to uh, go up to uh, Skagit Valley and, and look at birds. Yeah, I do. <laughs> is, is that something that you like recently got into? Like what, what's your like, how did, how did you get into that? Uh, honestly, I got into it in Florida because I was I came, you know, I came from Holland where like, there's like not one nature thing to do. And I saw like a bunch of like crazy birds in Florida and I was like, Whoa, this is interesting. So then when I came up here, I was like, wow, this is like even better. So <laughs> I just have books about uh, Pacific Northwest birds and some binoculars and I like going out into the mountains. So it works out. So would you, I mean, would you say that that's like a, a semi serious hobby for you or is it like <laughs> just a, my, a little distraction? <laughs> I, I, I like doing it. Yeah, for sure. I would say semi-serious, definitely. Thanks. <laughs> Shane, my name's uh, and I'm with the Irish Times. Have the, the FIAI contacted possibly teams since you have not played for the United States? Or have you contacted the FAI about possibly playing uh, internationally for IR? Shane, did you get all of that? Because I only got half of it. I, I I got the gist of it. Yeah, I got the gist of it. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, obviously, it's always been sort of a dream of mine to, to play for Ireland. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I, I saw the results have been, um, yeah, a little bit tough lately. Uh I mean, I, I feel like back in the day, people always used to ask me that. And I mean, I've always said that I'd love to play for either country, but if it's more realistic now to play for Ireland, I mean, obviously I'd love to play for them. And I feel like it's still kind of a goal of mine, but you know, you kind of have to, that's, that's just based on how well you play here, you know, and keep performing here. So um, I certainly, like I said, I mean, I certainly think I'm capable of playing for Ireland, but um, it's whether or not you get the opportunity is, is a different story. Has there been any communication between you and the FAI to that, uh, to that? Um... Hey, Joe, uh, Joe, sorry, just we're losing you a little bit there. I caught the first part. I'm, it sounds like Shane did too. Okay. Shane, uh, answer. Go for it. Yeah, no, I mean, there was a little bit in, Ar uh, in Orlando because we had the uh, James O'Connor, the Irish coach. And then unfortunately I sort of, hit a poor patch of form. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just kind of how it goes. And then obviously when I was younger, there was a few times, um, but uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Thank you. Hey Shane, look, uh, speaking of poor run of form last season, you only had two shots on goal in the previous year. You had three and six. Is that something you ever think about? <laughs> just to improve but without obviously minimizing the uh what you what you what you get paid to do and doing doing it well 
Yeah, listen, man. I mean, I, I'm not losing sleep over how many shots on goal I have. I'll tell you that much. All right. You know, if I have three, four, five, six this year, that's great. But I don't think that's something I'm really prioritizing. <laughs> yeah, kind of had a feeling that was the answer. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, Shane, um, Jason Mitchell at SBI. Last year was obviously a season of um, a lot of highs and lows. Uh, Champions League obviously didn't go well. Um, Orlando wasn't a great success. But then you had a really nice regular season, um, a great playoff run that ended how it ended. When you reflect back on 2020, what's your, what's your takeaway? Do you feel more of a sense of accomplishment or frustration or about what you, you guys didn't get done? Oh, definitely. Uh, that, that I mean, just yeah, just the final. You know, I mean, that's the the, the overwhelming reminder of that season. You know, I, I think it was a huge learning experience for me personally. Um, obviously, um, yeah, just want to in, in the way end it the right way um, and and chase trophies as, as much as we can this season. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously, looking back on last season, it just didn't end the way we wanted to end here. So. Um, yeah, you know, obviously you, you, you kind of sit back and you think about that game in Columbus and, uh, there's definitely some bitterness there. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, get, get it dialed in this year and, and, and sort of make another push. Cause, uh, there's nothing quite like playing in the playoffs. So, uh, that's what we're aiming to do.